Right, the little foamy cheap chuck glider, or come to that, any cheap foamy chuck glider, but the little is particularly popular. They come in all shapes and sizes. This is the 34 inch wingspan version, which is the kind of standard big version. This here is what I'd call the mini little. This is a 19 inch wingspan. Slightly more challenging build, but good fun. Build blog is on my channel, and I recently converted the really tiny one, which I call the Micro Mini. This flies really well. She had her maiden last week. I'll put a link to that at the end. The Micro, which is a massive 15 inch wingspan. So quite a variety if you want to build from the big daddy to the little baby. But techniques for many of them are much the same. But anyway, let's get on with it. Having converted 15 of them to radio controlled powered flight, and 20 if you include the small ones. Here's a selection. They go from singles to twins, EDFs, biplanes, you name it, I've done it. And as far as the small one goes, also biplanes, even four motor versions. Anyway, having built 20 of these now over the last four years, my methods and techniques have improved. So I just thought I'd share some of my super tips for building them. Where do we start? This was the first one, pretty scruffy job. And this is the number 15, which is pretty tidy, as you can see too. First question is dihedral. What is it? Should I take it out or should I leave it in? As you can see on my number 15 here, I'm leaving it in because I want this to be a nice, easy plane to fly. And dihedral is something that actually helps a plane self-trim. It's all to do with the aerodynamics. I won't go into it. This video will be too long. But I'm leaving it in with this one. But as you can see, with this one, which was actually my number one four or five years ago, I took it out. If you decide you want to take out the dihedral, it's beneficial for your build. How do you do it? The most reliable method I've found of taking the dihedral out, and I made a video, about, a separate video about it, is to cut a shallow groove in the underside so that it will close run hot glue down it and just hold it in place with a slight overbend and as you can see you get a beautifully straight no dihedral wing and this incidentally is my little red devil which I designed with the idea of being a aerobatic type little glider so short wings and very big ailerons solos mounted here so that the wires can go straight in here Here's a quick look at the Maiden. Let's see what happens when I give it a throw, half throttle throw. Whoa, it's quick. That's half throttle. But getting back to that original build, what else can I show you on it? Well, first off, I added a lot of carbon, which some people do, but I have now realized I don't really think is very necessary carbon in the main spar, carbon in the fuselage. Okay, it makes it very strong if I wanted to throw it around and do super speed, but note the difference, no carbon. The question about carbon depends on how heavy you want to build it. This has got a massive chunky 2212 on it and comes out at 350 grams with all that carbon in it. And of course that's without the LiPo. Big motor, speed machine needs a big LiPo. This one comes out at about 250 grams and just using a tiny little LiPo. This one actually is 56 grams, the Mini Micro. So, depends on how heavy you want to build it, whether you stick a load of carbon in or whether you just rely on the strength of the wing, which is pretty damn good. They bounce well because this is much lighter, much slower, much easier to fly. So the choice is yours. Do I add carbon or not? Do I take the dihedral out? Other thing you might notice on this is, this was my number one, so I was making it up as I went along. And incidentally, this has got over 50,000, 55,000 views now. It's a very detailed build blog. I'll link it at the end. But having said that, there are build blogs for all, pretty much all of my others, and my techniques have changed. You'll also notice I put these servos for the ailerons on the top here, exposed. So, in other words, in the event of a crash, very prone to damage. Through the course of evolution, that's all you see there. They're still on the top, but all you see is the top of the servo there because there's plenty of depth in the wing 
to actually install it internally. The way I do that is mark it out, use a hot wire tool and just melt a suitable hole. And obviously you have to put a pin through to mark where the servo arm is going to come through. So that's much tidier, that's one change I've made. You'll also notice my ailerons are inboard. Now you'll see lots of people on Facebook groups and forums saying, oh they won't work very well there, you should put them at the extremes of the wing. Let me just say, they do work pretty much perfectly inboard. They probably will have a bit more effect outside because obviously the turning moment. But the downside of that is you've then got to feed the servo wire all the way from here, down here. Mounting them inboard, you can just, before you install the wing, you can make a hole through the wing here. So there's no cutting slots across the wing. You can make a hole there, feed it through, so that it goes through to the body, which leads me on to the next bit, hollowing out the body. How do you do it? That also brings me to the question of what do you do with the main spar? So first off, as far as the main spar goes, I used to fit it all in one, one go, slide it through. You cut the ailerons first because it's much easier to do that. Full detail of all that is on my build blog, so I'm not going to go into it, but it's just a question of marking it out, cutting it, cutting a bevel so that it'll turn. You leave it very thin here, and I've got some scotch crystal on there just to give it a bit of reinforcement. More laterally, I've actually been using bits of plastic milk bottle for hinges. That works well. But anyway, as far as the main spar goes, I used to put it through in one go, solid. More recently, I've actually been slicing it in half. People say it makes it weaker. It doesn't make it weaker. This was sliced in half. Look, that, that is as strong as if it was a continuous piece. Slicing it in half means that when you hollow it out, potentially, especially if you glue it in slightly trimmed, you've already got potential for a hole down the middle. So the way I actually do the centre section is I made a couple of tools with stiff wire, heat those over a gas flame, and then you can just basically carve it out. I've got, got a bigger one here, smaller one, a couple of little bits of stiff wire that are good for doing servos and just smoothing out bits. So that's the way I've found the easiest way to remove the foam from the inside of the body. I use hot glue to fix the wings. Advantages it's hard and gone off dry in less than two or three minutes, which means you can carry on working. As far as the elevator servo goes, on some of my models, it's mounted here. If you're using a big motor, you might well need extra weight on the tail to counterbalance. Also, that goes as far as the size of LiPo you're using. This takes a tiny little LiPo, just an 800 2S, which as you can see, slides way down in. The advantage of hollowing the body out as far back as you can is that it gives you the potential to slide the LiPo as far back as you can if you find you need more tail weight to achieve the centre of gravity, which incidentally is about 55 mil from the start of the loading edge at the wing route, so about here. Generally speaking, I don't add the elevator servo until I'm pretty much at the finishing stages and know how the weight balance is working out. Because, like I say, you might need it there if you've got a big motor on. That's the smallest motor I've ever used. I think it's an 1108 or something. I'll put it on the screen. 10 grams weight. And there is a separate build blob for this one. Because, as I say, this one was intended to be a very slow flyer because I want to use it for, F for FPV flying which I've still never managed to do despite having lots of gear. I know I'm rambling through this, but I wanted to make it as brief as possible. Getting back to the elevator, various ways of doing this, as you can see that I've done over the last four years. On this twin, obviously, you cut the elevator before you glue it in. I just made a shallow cut right across the tail they have changed the design of this a little bit, but it's, this does work on any model. Shallow cut, cut a 45 degree bevel, 
and it's got a bit of scotch crystal on the top for reinforcement. I use scotch crystal because it doesn't degrade like ordinary sellotape or that nylon reinforced stuff which looks stronger but only lasts a year or two and as you can see aileron servo is inset in the wing obviously because it's a twin I needed the weight and on this one here I just sliced it across made one out of a bit of 5mm foam board and this has got I doubt if you can see it it's got tiny little hinges made from plastic milk bottle makes a very tidy job plus you can also see here because the elevator servo is here I've just got a bit of 0.7mm wire going across to actuate the elevator one thing I haven't mentioned of course is engine mounting which generally speaking is a question of slicing off the nose with a bit of a down angle for down thrust and a bit of a side angle for side thrust and then making a suitable mount and on this one it actually screws on but most of them most of the motors bolt through so you have to fix it to the mount before hot gluing it on and obviously make a hole through there for the three brushless motor wires briefly mention electronics that's the tiny little FS2A receiver that works with FlySky speed controller plus I've also added a model finder on this because if you lose control and it goes into the bushes somewhere it's handy having a little beeper there they're cheap as chips and they work probably a fiver can save you losing a model so I've made a little hole in the side there because it will help hear the sounder if it does get lost somewhere I will add one last thing before I wind this up I've seen various pictures of people adding little hatch levers here to hold this in all kinds of things all I do is a bit of barbecue stick hot glued in there so that goes in the hole here like so and if you leave that knob on it conveniently slides down on it so oh, I didn't actually go into how you remove this you just take a blade around it and cut it that goes through there sometimes put a little pin through there rubber band on there works really nicely dead simple so I think that just about covers all I want you to say in this very short video trying to tell you what I've learned over 20 little glider builds I think they're a great little cheap plane to mess around with and try and convert if you want to learn about RC plane building so don't be scared get on with it and hopefully this video will give you some useful information if you've got any questions stick them down in comments below I'll do my best to answer them hope you found it interesting if, if you've enjoyed it please give it a like it helps my algorithms and like I say loads of build blogs on there for, for all of my constructions so that's all for now enjoy your building and hopefully I'll catch you all again soon bye for now it's been a while since I've flown her this was probably my third or fourth little conversion